Welcome back to Hallway Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today topic we are going to discuss on Lawn Layer 2. Let's start our part 4. Now GVRP use timer to regulate its sending and receiving. Alright, so let's look into the concept of GVRP timer. First, we have the join timer. Remember just now I mentioned that there is a join in and join empty. So it controls the sending of join messages, all right? So which is a join in and join empty message. And here, when we configure the uh, timer, it's in a centisecond. All right, so centisecond basically is 100 millisecond. So here, we have 100 centisecond. So 100 centisecond basically means that it's one second. So the join timer by default is one second. Next, we have a hold timer. A hold timer controls the sending of a join message. In this case, join in message, join empty message, and the leave message. And the hold timer here, the default is 600 centisecond. In this case, 6 seconds. Then we also have a leave timer that is control the attribute deregistration and leave all uh, timer that uh, control the sending of leave all messages. And for leave timer, the default here is 30 seconds and leave all timer the default is two minutes all right so uh, these are all the default timer you can change the timer on the trunk pond right now let's look into the working principle of how the attribute work so first we are going to look into the one-way registration and two-way registration on the vlan attribute now here we have a statically correct uh, vlan 2 all right that's on the uh, switch one so VLAN 2 has been created. Now because the GVRP are uh, enabled on Ethernet 1 here, so after the expired of the timer on the GVRP, which is 6 seconds, so E1 is going to send a join empty message to E2. All right. Now for the GVRP to work, because that they are using a multicast, they are going to send two GVRP join empty message. Okay. So on the first one, it's going to send to R2. Uh, sorry for the S2. Then on the second uh, whole timer expired, it's going to send a second join empty to S2. Alright. So when S2 received the first join message, again the whole timer start counting, and after six seconds, which is the whole timer, it's going to send this uh, join empty again to E4, which is in switch three. So now on. Ethernet 2 on S2 because early on you do not have this VLAN so now the dynamic VLAN 2 is created on the port E2 so we have a join empty right now if let's say we look into the other way around now S3 now statically create a VLAN 2 so now we have a join in the message it's because that now we already have a VLAN 2 so this join in message is being sent from S3 to S2 again is going to send two times. Okay, so S2 of uh, Ethernet 2 now dynamically register the VLAN 2. Now because that VLAN 2 already exists in switch number two, after the join in and the message timer expired, it's going to send to S1. Now S1 have this uh, message received, so that is a join in message. Now, this is for the registration. Okay, so what happened if let's say we have the VLAN that's delete. So here in this diagram, we delete the VLAN. Now, when we delete the VLAN, we are going to send a leave empty message after the whole timer expired. Okay, and on top of that, because that this one have the VLAN 2 already, switch 2 of uh, Ethernet 3 is going to send a leave in because there's already have VLAN 2 to switch number 3 at that received by Ethernet 4 all right remember that this is manually correct okay so once they receive this information what will happen here is that after the S3 again delete the VLAN 2 it's going to send a leave empty to the uh, switch number 2 so now we have the leave empty so this is how the um, GVRP work based on the join in, join empty, leave in and leave empty. Alright, so next we are going to look into the GVRP registration mode. 
In GVRP, we have three modes, normal, fixed and forbidden. Now under the normal circumstances, this is the default mode. The normal mode is the default. In normal mode, an interface can dynamically register and deregister VLAN, propagate both dynamic and the static VLAN uh, declaration. So basically, if I have a switch number one, send to switch number two and switch number three. So let's say this is the uh, topology. If I'm going to create a VLAN two, and this is a normal mode. All right, so VLAN two will be created here and VLAN 2 will be created here under the normal. So assuming that if I'm going to remove the VLAN 2, here is going to remove. That will be under the uh, uh, normal mode. Now next we are going to look into the other mode here. It's called fixed mode. So let's say now I have a fixed mode. So here we have a GVRP and here we have a fixed mode. All right, remember that this mode is configured on our trunk port. Now, assuming that now I have the uh, switch number two here configured as a fixed mode. If let's say I'm going to create a VLAN two here, the registration uh, GVRP will send to S2, but S2 will not uh, create the dynamic. So you can see that in fixed mode, an interface cannot create a dynamic registration VLAN. So the VLAN two will not happen over here. But it can propagate the static VLAN declaration. What is mean over here is, assuming that now in S2, I create a VLAN 3, okay, on switch 2. All right, so here, I'm going to send this VLAN 3 to S1. And S1, if let's say S1 here, the mode here is normal. So S1 will have the VLAN 3. So that's a fixed mode. Whereas the forbidden, in forbidden mode, an interface cannot dynamically register VLAN or propagate VLAN uh, about any VLAN but VLAN 1. So which means that if I have a switch number 1, connect to switch number 2, and connect to switch number 3. So assuming that this here, I'm going to configure as a forbidden. And if I'm going to create a VLAN 2, I'm going to send to here, this guy will not create VLAN 2. No VLAN 2 will be accessed over here. All right, neither that I'm going to propagate. And even though if I'm going to create a static, let's say I'm going to create a VLAN tree. So this information will not send to the switch number one as well. So that is forbidden. All right, so we are going to examine the lab on how to configure the GVRP, which is quite straightforward. Okay, so straight away we jump into configuring a GVRP. So here, the following figure show the topology of company A. All right. Perform the following configuration according to your requirement. Create a static VLAN 2 on switch number 1 and switch number 3. So we are going to create VLAN 2 on both switch 1 and switch 3. That should be quite straightforward. Okay. So this port here, E001, and this port here, E002 on both sides, we are going to configure the trunk. Okay. And we are going to allow VLAN uh, to pass through its all. Okay. So we are going to configure the GVRP on uh, switch number 2 to learn the VLAN 2. Alright, so this is a very straightforward lab. Okay, so let's jump to our lab now. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.